Today we are going over Google Ads, or if you're an old school person like myself, Google AdWords. Uh, Chris is here to answer your questions in the chat if you folks do have questions. Uh, the nice thing is, is that I had no clue how to do Google Ads, took some time and energy to learn it, and I can assure you it is super duper easy. So it'll be a nice quick class on how to set up your first productive or successful ad on Google Ads, and then from there you're good to go. I won't be creating a landing page in this uh, little tutorial, just because you folks should know how to do that. We have tons of other video footage on how to create a landing page. It's very, very easy. Mr. Chris will actually link a YouTube uh, video in the chat while I'm talking. Again, this is just a basic, very, very basic Google Ads course, 101 ads, literally how to set it up. Um, Google has, <laughs> I joked with Chris about it a little bit beforehand, Google has made it easy because you are giving them money to advertise on their platform versus say Google Analytics, which is a nightmare of trying to figure out what information needs to be placed where, so this is kind of cool. Um, we are gonna screen share right now. Please let me know if you folks can see the screen share should see an endless mirror of blank screens and chats. Yep, I can see it just fine, so. Thank you. Appreciate it, boss. I'll probably be sipping tea in and out of this as well. My stomach's not feeling too well, but anyways, if you do hear me kind of go silent for a brief second, that's probably what I'm doing. So I've already logged into my Google Ads account. If you need to know where it's at, you can just Google Google Ads, and it'll be the very, very first uh, selection on Google. Um, once you log in, obviously you'll have your information in the upper right-hand corner, which is perfect. And when you dive right into it, it's gonna just start you off with a brand new campaign. Um, and this is the first thing that you're really gonna see aside from just making sure that you have the proper login credentials. What you're gonna see here is the first thing, uh, and, and my favorite part, which is targeting the individuals that you want the ad to go to when the search is created. Um, you have two separate options right off the, right off the gate, uh, or out of the gate rather. You can find new customers in your area based off of the radius around your business or a specific area. As real estate agents, I highly recommend that you set up the specific areas and not really around your business because a lot of people who are specifically buyers who are coming into the county or into the state or city that you, you specialize in, they may be coming from out of state anyways. Um, so focusing in on those other areas, uh, a good example, um, and we brought this up several times in other examples for Facebook ads, if you know that a large company is building a warehouse or building a, you know, a call center, um, a factory, anything that you can think of that a big corporation's doing in your city to help bring jobs and create economic growth, you wanna target people where those hubs of those companies are. So for instance, if Amazon's growing a big factory downtown in Albuquerque, New Mexico, I'll probably target this ad towards people in Seattle where Amazon's hub is, because I know that a lot of those people are gonna have to transfer over here to get the company up and running um, and smooth sailing. So the nice thing is, is that you have an option to choose where you wanna search. You can add city, state, or country. Um, it's even smart enough to realize where you're kind of at based off your IP address, which is a little creepy, but I think it makes it a hell of a lot easier. Um, I'm actually located right in this little button here, and it's actually pulling up the whole city of Rio Rancho. It's pulling up the Pueblo and Placidas, as well as Algodonas, which is a small little farming community. Now, if I wanted to say specialize in Rio Rancho, I might wanna also add Albuquerque. We'll select that, and now it's pulling up the whole metropolitan area of Albuquerque as well. Um, Santa Fe is another good one. Sell it. And then again, if I'm thinking of places outside of my local area, maybe Phoenix, or I even, how about Colorado? It's a little cheaper than Colorado. Might wanna talk about downsizing. So you can adjust everything. You can get super, 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 super analytical, super micro or macro with this, which is really cool. Um, so that's gonna be my, my section for um, the newest houses in Bernalillo. Let's pretend that that's where I specialize. So if you notice, I'm very, very happy with this. I've got a lot of potential audience size depending on how much money I wanna spend, which is totally fine. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and select next. Now, if you notice, this is a heck of a lot easier than Facebook's targeting. Um, it kind of explains things to you a little easier, which is really, really nice. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Um, what language do you want to advertise in? Uh, English, obviously. Uh, what is your business category? And this is, I did have to search for it, but I can't, you will find real estate agents 
Um, if you're a broker or anything else like that, that's something you could search in here as well. And then what specific products or services do you want to promote the, the ad? So now you're targeting um, similar terms that people are searching for, pet friendly houses uh, or pet friendly cities, you know, houses for sale. And you can start searching all kinds of really, really cool stuff. Let's see, uh, real. So real estate and then the suggestions, just like the Facebook box will start popping up information. So maybe you're doing a down, you know, a downsizing for senior living. Um, maybe you're a commercial real estate agent. Uh, I'm looking for property management. You know, I, I want to live in a condo. I want to be downtown. So you can adjust what terms people are searching for. So condos for sale in Albuquerque. If it registers condo, it sees that you're wanting to push advertising revenue to Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's a win, right? That'll probably be one of the first ads that pops up on Google's first or second page search result based off of how much money you're spending on the advertisement. So that's how you're going to specify uh, similar terms, search terms on Google. Uh, and again, it's super easy, right? I'm already almost done here, which is super cool. Uh, if you notice, it will reduce down that audience size based off of the stuff because you are starting to get a little bit more granular on what search results you want to do. And as far, as far as the best practices, obviously keeping them real estate related is very, very important. The other thing you can think about is maybe, you know, the time of year, if it's involving Christmas, maybe you want to start focusing on Christmas lights. Uh, you know, if it's, if it's a sport, you know, if it's the Super Bowl, you want to focus in on apartments or football, you want to start targeting people with football, maybe a specific stadium, um, you know, condos near the, Providence Park, which is the Portland Timbers Stadium in Portland, right? So if you do Providence Park, you could pop that up. It'll know it's looking for condos. And then also Google, the algorithm will also register to put your ad up when it's talking about that specific sports team as well. So it's a win across the board. You can have little or big wins. <clears throat> Obviously, the more real estate related your terms are, the, you know, the more competition is going to be out there who's spending a lot more money than probably you are uh, looking at Zillow, for instance, um, who are trying to get on that first or second page result. So think about how much you want to spend if your budget per allows you to really get those big, big, big focus keywords. By all means, no one's no one's stopping you. Your ROI may be a little bit less than Facebook is. But at the very least, these are people searching for you. The lead is generally and typically going to be a lot hotter than a Facebook lead is who's just trying to get the information. So we're there. I'm happy with what I've got. I'm going to go ahead and click next. Wet my whistle with some tea really quick. And then we're going to scroll up here. And now we're writing the actual advertisement. What you're going to see on the Facebook ad. And what, or I'm sorry, Facebook, man, I've been doing Facebook too long. You're actually going to see, you're going to see what's on the actual Google ad as well. It's very, very easy. We're already on step two. Super, super simple. Um, the nice thing about Google is they're going to help you, <laughs> right? They're going to give you some tips and tricks themselves. You know, listen to them. It's not that difficult. Don't try and, you know, come up with a silver bullet when you don't need one because it's all right here for you. So you want to do actionable odd items. Are you selling a product? Technically, yes, it's more of a service, but you are selling maybe a list of properties for a specific area. So, you know, instead of your reliable e real estate agents, thirty words. Sorry. So again, I'm still learning this too. Um, but what we want to focus on is to obviously they only limit you to thirty characters. So maybe it is just a nice, short, sweet, simple one, right? Talk to our team today. Oh, and you can't do capitals, and you can't use an explanation mark. Interesting. So it'll tell you when you can't or can't do something. Otherwise, uh, you know, go for it. Facebook's a little different where it'll review your ad after it's done and then tell you that you've done it wrong. At least Google will automatically tell you, hey, this character can't be used because it is a hyperlink or whatever you want to do. Um, so we're going to change this information now. So the description is more the metadata. You're explain. You're trying to sell people to click, right? Need a new property in Albuquerque. I'll before it has what you want. Right. So you're giving them a call to action, which is filling out the form. 
on that beautiful squeeze page that you created. Uh, in this case, I just have it linked to easyagentpro.com, but this would be the squeeze page link. So once they click any of this information, it'll direct them to that squeeze page where they fill the form out, boom, they get the list of properties, right? So this is something that you can use for landing pages if you want to. In Reality, with a Google ad, I would even recommend maybe staying away from some of those pages and just directing them right to a farm page, getting them the information they want immediately without the without the option of putting in a specific uh, landing page or call to action that they have to fill out in order to view the information. These people are already hot leads. They wanna see something, they're searching for it in Google. Um, so I take advantage of that, trust the individual that they fill out the information because leads are people too. Um, on their own on the landing page. The landing page has tons of great information, tons of great calls to actions already on it uh, with the farm page, my apologies, not landing page, uh, the farm page itself of the featured area that you're trying to highlight. The nice thing is, is I'm done, I like the way this looks, I'm very, very happy, I'm gonna click next. And then we're gonna cruise right into how much I wanna spend on average per day. The nice thing about this is you don't have a lifetime value either, you just kinda go into your account and adjust how much you wanna spend a day. In this case, you know, $460 a month is a little bit, you know, it's pretty it's pretty pricey. You can also adjust for Canadian in this as well. It'll change all that information, but you can adjust exactly how much you want to spend. You know, I've seen people do really really well with a $25 ad um, or a $20 a day ad and then running it for 3 days. You're going to get a lot of clicks per month. You're going to get a lot of impressions per month as well. So people are going to remember who you are. The ROI is not going to be as good as Facebook is. So remember that these numbers are going to be lower than what you see on Facebook. But again, you pay for it because you're getting that better lead using this type of system versus using Facebook ads where people will just fill the form out, get the information and never, ever contact you or give you crap information. Um, so this is going to be a little bit less cost effective. Um, but in a long-term strategy, a long-term investment for advertising, this is probably a really great PPC uh, avenue. So I'm going to do twenty dollars and seven cents just to really screw with them and get you know tax Google that extra three pennies or whatever. I'm going to select next here. It's going to show me all of my information. It's basically going to review the campaign, show what I did what my daily budget is, the monthly maximum, which is great, um, and then all of the other information. So what I'm what I'm selling, the ad itself, if I wanted to edit it, I could always refer back to it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click next. And now is the time where I'd enter in my credit card, give Google a little bit more cash, make their stock go up, and then they take care of the rest for me. I'm not gonna use my credit card information on this because I do not uh, want to spend $20 on a Google ad. I'd rather spend on something else. Um, but this is this is it. This is how simple and easy it is to use. It takes 15 minutes to literally set up a productive ad on Google versus Facebook where it could take 30 to 40 minutes depending on how clunky the interface is. Google does a great job at making sure that you folks can get in and out quickly and efficiently, get your ad running, and then go show some houses. So take advantage of uh, Google Ads. Again, it's a very basic one. Uh, we can later, you know, we can discuss other SEO topics, search, uh, search tools. There's tons of tools online if you want to search what the most popular, you know, search result is or search category or section is on Google. There's tons of stuff that'll show you the most searched word. Uh, how often it's searched, where it's mostly searched, things like that. So there's tools all over the place for you folks to help or for you folks to look at if you do need help. And uh, I'll do some research and dig around on the top five or six of my favorite ones and we'll post it as well. But that's it. Google ads are stupid simple. Um, it's really, really hard to mess up. What do you think, Chris? I know you, this is your first impression on it as well. I think it's fabulous. And, um, you know, if you guys are you know, running Facebook ads a lot. Like this is just another cool place to be putting some of your ad dollars. Definitely. Diversify. And Chris isn't, Chris is not wrong. Sorry. My, my, uh, battery keeps dying on me here. Um, so you're going to hear a lot of beeping coming up, but, uh, Chris isn't wrong. Diversify where you're spending your money on advertisements and don't be scared to do stuff that you've never tried before, or even better. If you think it's outdated, Put your right. Yes. Postcards are completely outdated. Business cards are outdated. That's a niche audience. I know myself. I like to keep it kind of small in my community. I don't even use Amazon. That's how old school I am. <laughs> um, but, you know, be that person who does send in a gift card with a signature on it or not a gift card. I'm sorry, a little uh, postcard with a signature on it. Be that one person who does stand out in your community who's really trying to make an effort and reach out. Um, so don't be scared to diversify and try different things. Um, a lot of our successful agents are doing all of the things and they're just trying to find a nice medium of how to do it properly.